Hey, the Lord bless you guys. Evangelist Rob here of Rob Woods Ministries. I have a specific word for someone out there. If there's anyone out there that's been the victim of abuse, trauma, uh, traumatization, the Lord wants you to know it was not your fault. It wasn't your fault. It's not your fault. It's nothing you did or didn't do that this was brought on you. You were a victim. God's going to bring restoration, recompense, and restitution. I'm going to take you into 2 Samuel chapter 2. I'm sorry, 2 Samuel chapter 4, where Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth, was dropped by the nurse of Saul as she was running from the battle. Mephibosheth became lame in his feet. He was dropped. Someone dropped him in life. He was hurt and wounded. He was a victim. It was traumatization that Mephibosheth carried throughout his youth, young adult life, till he was found. Well, I don't want to get ahead of the story, but guys, it'd be an honor if you'd subscribe to the channel. Thank you in advance. Specific prayer requests can go in the comment section. I would love for you to chill with me for another four minutes. Max, I'll pray for you. If anyone out there needs inner healing or deliverance from wounds in the pockets of your soul where you were a victim, you, there's been trauma, traumatization, someone dropped you as a result, you became lame in your feet. Now, this is metaphorical, not literal most of the time, but let's take it into 2 Samuel 4, chapter 4, verse 4. Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son who was lame in his feet. He was five years old when the news about Saul and Jonathan came. His nurse took him up and fled. It happened as she made haste to flee that he fell and became lame. So his name was Mephibosheth. Now, he became crippled. Someone dropped him. He was only five. It wasn't his fault. The nurse was running. She dropped him. He was hurt. He was crippled. He was wounded. And he carried this through his whole life, this traumatization, till David came in verse 9. Now, the, uh, chapter 9, and now David said, is there still so anyone who was left in the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake. Now listen to this. The word kindness is also replaced with faithfulness and covenant. Jonathan and David made a covenant. The Bible says Jonathan loved David as his own soul, even though Jonathan was the son of Saul, and Saul was trying to hunt and kill David. Because God called David to be king, Saul knew it, and Saul didn't want him to. But the word covenant, friend, means pact or agreement. Jesus made a covenant with you. It's a pact or an agreement. Now listen to what happens. This is incredible. Verse 3, then the king said, is there still not someone of the house of Saul to whom I may show kindness? David said, there's still someone in the house of Saul. It's his instinctive. I feel someone because of the sake of covenant. There's still someone left. I've got to find this person. And it said, and Ziba said to the king, there is still a son of Jonathan who was lame his feet. He was crippled. He was wounded. And verse four, and the king said to him, where is he? Ziba said, indeed, he is in the house of Machar the son of Amiel in Lodabar. Friends, Lodabar means the land of low living. David found Mephibosheth in Lodabar. He was in the land of low living. Mephibosheth wasn't living at the place that God desired or the potential of heaven over his life. He was so in, he was in his past and he was just because of his lameness and crippleness, he didn't want to go forward in life. And you could understand it'd be hard. He's five years old. He's lame. He's crippled. Now, someone else may have dropped you. Someone else may have hurt you. There's been victimization, abuse, traumatization. Look what happens. This is so powerful. Verse 7. David said, do not fear. I will surely show you kindness 
for Jonathan, your father's sake, and I will restore to you all the land of Saul, your grandfather, and you shall continually eat bread at my table, continually. David says, Mephibosheth, you're going to come eat with me. You're going to chill with the kings. I'm going to put you at this table. Now, David puts Mephibosheth at the table because the table's now covering his weakness, his propensity. It's covering his legs, his lameness. This is so powerful, guys. If you could just get this, man, in verse 10, you therefore and your sons and servants shall work the land for him and shall bring him in the harvest. But Mephibosheth, your master's son, shall eat bread at my table always. Verse 13, so Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he continually ate at the king's table. Friends, you're going to eat at the king's table. You may have been dropped. You may have a lameness or weakness. God's going to set you at that table of feast in the presence of your enemy. Psalms 23 says he sets a table for me in the presence of my enemies. The table is going to cover your weakness, your propensity, any failure, sin. You're going to eat at the king's table because of covenant, because of the pact, the agreement that Jesus made with you, friends. It cannot be broken. When Christ shed his blood for you on that bloody cross on Calvary, he made the new covenant. Father, I'm thanking you if anyone's been a victim, traumatization, Failure, weakness, propensity, sin. Don't live in Lodabar, the way the Lord's saying, come out of the land of low living. Come out of Lodabar, the Lord's saying, come eat at the king's table continually. Everything the same way it was restored to Mephibosheth is going to be restored to you with recompense and restitution in Jesus' mighty name. It's a powerful story. Read it in your own time. Study it. I didn't do it justice. I understand that. If you desire, it would be an honor if you'd subscribe to the channel. The Lord bless you guys. Amen.